Hey guys, in this video we are going to be going over a very basic linked list question. This is something that an interviewer might ask you for a lower level position or something you might get as the very first warm up question during an online or technical interview. Now the question is, find the middle of the linked list given a head node. Now if you're not familiar what a linked list is or what a head node is, check out our last few videos. The last two of them talk about what a linked list is and how to actually Actually use the code for one of them. So it's imperative when we get a question like this that we ask the interviewer a couple of questions. For example, well, is the linked list single or doubly linked? And in this case, the linked list is singly linked. There are a couple of different solutions to this question. Let's first ask a couple more questions. So we can see here that we have a linked list with a odd amount of integers inside of it. And the obvious middle here is four. But when we have an even amount of elements in our linked list, which one would the interviewer want us to return? Well, for the sake of this question, let's assume the interviewer wants us to return the first element after the partition in the middle of the linked list. Now that we know that, let's talk about how we can solve this question. Now our first instinct might be something like this. We simply traverse through the linked list recording all the elements into a regular list. Once we record all the elements into our regular list, what we can do is simply find the middle of that list. Now when we give our interviewer our solution, we should also tell them what the time complexity and the space complexity. In this case, we are going through all n elements of the linked list exactly once and we are appending to a string which is also n time. Therefore, a time complexity of this algorithm would simply be big O of n. Now, for our memory complexity, however, we are actually storing all the elements of our linked list in another list, which means we have an auxiliary memory complexity of n as well. And that might be a bit extraneous. So our interviewer might say to us, well, can you come up with a solution that uses constant memory? So no auxiliary memory other than the initial linked list you're given. So we're back to the drawing board. We want a solution that can give us the middle of our linked list in n time and also constant memory. So the next thing we think of is perhaps go through the entire linked list with a pointer once. That way we can see how many elements our linked list has. So we would simply keep a counter and iterate through the linked list. Once we find how many elements we have in our linked list, in this case four elements, we would simply put another counter to the beginning of the linked list and go half of that distance. So in this case, we would get to the four and if it's an even amount of numbers, we could just increment our final pointer by one and print out our new middle. The time complexity of this is n, once again, we are iterating through the entire linked list a total of one and a half times, which is one and a half n, which is simply big O of n. And now since we're only using a pointer, which is a constant memory tool, and a counter, we are actually using constant memory. Now this is an efficient solution, but the interviewer could also then say, I want to guarantee that I will be able to find the middle of my linked list with only one pass. Now we have to think of something different. So how do we find the middle of this linked list in only one pass? Pause this video and try and think about it for yourself. Now, the trick here is a little technique called fast runner, slow runner. Now, the way this technique actually works is you create two pointers at the beginning of the linked list. One of them is known as a fast runner, which we will denote in blue, and the other one is what's known as a slow runner. What they will basically do is the fast runner will iterate through the linked list twice as fast as the slow runner. And the idea is because it's going twice as fast, by the time the fast runner reaches the final element, the slow runner will actually still be right in the middle. Now the way we can do this is simply by incrementing our fast runner by two elements, by two nodes, for every one node that we increment our slow runner, or the opposite, incrementing our slow runner by one node every other iteration, while we increment our fast runner every node 
every iteration. This might sound a bit confusing, but let's look at it in code to sort of wrap our minds around it. So as you can see here, I'm still using the node class that we had from the last video. Now here's our function, get middle element, and we simply take in one parameter, which is the head. Now the first thing we want to do is we want to initialize both of our runners at the same position, the start of the linked list, which is the head node. Now what we want to do is we want to create a boolean variable called tick, and tick is going to delegate when we want to increment our slow runner. So remember, we are always going to be incrementing our fast runner every single iteration, but our slow runner will only increment every other iteration to simulate half the amount of times that the fast runner is going. So we are going to make our while loop. So this while loop is while fast runner, which means while we have not reached a none element, aka the end of the linked list. When we hit the end of the linked list, our fast runner will be none because the last element always points to a none. This for loop, this while loop will cease to continue once we hit that element. Now we simply want to increment our fast runner. Like we said, fast runner equals fast runner next node. So we're going to the next node um, on every iteration with our fast runner. But what we're going to do for our slow runner is if this tick variable is true, then we're going to increment our fat, our slow runner. And at the end of every while loop iteration, we are simply going to reverse whatever our tick is. So in the first case, our tick is false and our slow runner does not increment. And at the end of this while loop, we see here tick equals not tick. Well, not false is equal to true. So tick is going to turn to true after the first iteration. Now in the second iteration, tick will be true and the slow runner will increment. After the slow runner increments, our tick will be then switched to its opposite, which is false. So we can see here, every iteration tick is changing from true to false, true to false, and we only increment our slow runner when tick is true. So that's just a little trick we got over here to make sure that our slow runner is moving half the speed of our fast runner. And at the end, all we have to do is return the slow runner's value. Now, a bit down here, I've created a test linked list just so we can test our little solution out. So our linked list is simply 3 points to 7, which points to 10, which points to 12, which points to 15. I'm going to write it down here just so you guys can visualize it. 3 points to 7, which points to 10, which points to 12, which points to 15. Now if we were to run this code, we can see the middle element is 10. And by running it, we also get the middle element. Now let's say we delete the 15. We would still want to get 10. So all I'm going to do here is delete the node, delete the link. And now if we run our code again, we are still going to get 10. And just as a final test, let's delete the last 12 so that our middle element is now 7. And if we run this again, we will get 7. And there you have it, guys. Hopefully you have a better idea of how linked lists works and how interview questions can be poised around them. Now, have no fear, we're going to be going into a lot more complicated questions in the future, but the fast runner, slow runner technique is a vital technique that you're going to see in a lot of these questions. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, make sure you give us a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe for the next videos. And as always, the link to the code will be in the description below. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time.